now tuned into the greatest. The Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir! Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, or even if you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a quick take, 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. And shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this episode. Get $20 off your first ticket purchase when you use the promo code The Run Podcast. Now, this code can only be applied for first time users on the mobile app or website. So I'm not sure about you, but definitely want to go to some NFL games this year. Um, so I got to go ahead and create my account. And then, best believe, I will definitely be saving $20 off of my ticket. I don't know about you, but I certainly will. <laughs> anyway, speaking of the NFL, man, a lot of different things to cover here. But but first off, we got to start with the Atlanta Falcons because, you know, it was kind of the battle of the birds here. These teams, both in the NFC, they go against each other. Not very often, but one team definitely shows some dominant fashion over the other in this matchup against the Seahawks here. And shout out to all the Seahawks fans because I ain't going to sit here and hold you, bro. I ain't one of them in denial fans that's going to sit here and tell you, oh, it was lucky they beat the Falcons. and all. No, it was a well-deserved victory, and they earned this dub here. Geno Smith balled out, threw for over 200 yards, 18 for 28, and completing his passes, like no interceptions, no turnovers on his part. He did his thing. Tremendous throws i seen from Geno Smith, throwing absolute dots and darts all over the field from the Atlanta Falcons secondary that was just so poor out there that did not look like the team that I've watched over the first five weeks. I don't know what was going on with the secondary, which we'll touch on for the Atlanta Falcons in a second, but I want to give credit to the Seahawks because it's, it's earned. A lot of people talk about the Seahawks and they say, oh, easy schedule. This team is not really a factor in the NFC this year, but truthfully, bro, any team that's somewhat competitive and staying afloat in this division and in this conference, you have a fair shot of making something happen because we all know when the playoffs get here, anything can happen. Injuries have already seemed to take down some of these juggernauts in the NFC. The Chiefs are obviously AFC team, but they're facing some injuries. The 49ers facing some injuries. The Lions facing some injuries. A lot of these teams in the NFC who we say are top dogs are facing some injuries. So that just tells me any team that's hanging around and being just as good enough to go toe-to-toe with anybody, oh, they have a chance to definitely make something happen come playoffs. But... Um, above all, man, congrats on congrats on that win for the Seahawks. They moved to four and three. Um, and you know, they're two and one on the road. They, they walked in a trap and took over the trap for the Atlanta Falcons, unfortunately. I'm sick that happened. I can't believe it did, but this is where the Falcons went wrong on so many different parts. So many different parts. Usually we were able to rely on the defense to really keep the Falcons afloat. Um, the Falcons defense, they forced a turnover in the last five straight games doing their thing, whether it was an interception, whether it was a fumble, just some sort of turnover that really helped them get the ball back to the offense and take advantage of another opportunity. But we didn't see that at all in this game here against the Seahawks. First off, I got to start with that secondary with the, with the um, Falcons because it, it was it was sad to watch. Um, A.J. Terrell, step to the front, please, please. Cornerback A.J. Terrell. They just paid this man 60 mil, 60 plus million dollars guaranteed to do his job at cornerback. Not saying it's deserved or or um not deserved at all. I'm, I'm just saying this is the facts. They paid him 60 million guaranteed. This man got bullied all game. All game by DK Metcalf. It was sickening to watch. I watched DK Metcalf tear up the Atlanta Falcons secondary single-handedly. And shout out to Geno Smith for throwing dots because obviously those passes wouldn't have been completed if Geno Smith didn't put it exactly where it needed to be. But bro, some of these passes and some of the efforts that I seen from the secondary just was not there from the Atlanta Falcons. I literally watched with my own eyes. AJ Terrell got blocked with one arm by DK Metcalf. 
We know he's a strong receiver. We know he's a very, uh, uh, very heavy lifting, big time receiver, big body type of receiver. We know, hey, what, hey, DK Metcalf is the shit. Let's be honest, bro. Hey, he's the shit. He's a strong receiver. People say he's like Calvin Johnson times two. Um, you, you see he's like Randy Moss with some extra muscles. It's what people say. These are the things that people are saying on social media and the comparisons that people make. So I understand what DK Metcalf can do for an offense. But, bro, to get blocked by, by a man with one arm, that's just sickening. That's unacceptable. That cannot happen at all. It was horrible to watch. I was upset about that. Um, so that's the first things first from there. They got lit up. They gave up a bunch of yards. Um, 236 air yards for the um, uh, Seahawks that they had over the Atlanta Falcons. And that's just unacceptable, man. That's unacceptable. They did not force a single turnover for the, um, for the, for the Seahawks. There was one fumble with Geno Smith, but he recovered it. So it doesn't really count. It was unacceptable for the Falcons. And then on the offensive end, you know, I would love to to sit here and say, this is all on a defense or this is only a, a defensive reason of why we lost. But offense, 14 points. That's it for the game. You had a, a touchdown in the second half. You had a touchdown in the third. Um, other than that, Kirk Cousins had three straight possessions where he turned the ball over. That's unacceptable. You cannot continue to have games like that if you're going to win and play from behind and even come back. Like, that's not that's not acceptable. Three straight turnovers from the, the Atlanta Falcons. Awful. And then just to kind of put things in perspective, there was, in the second half, the Seahawks only had 49 rushing yards and they only completed three passes. But yet, the Falcons keep getting these opportunities to make something happen, even though they were giving up touchdowns and all of this other stuff. They still didn't do anything and capitalize with those opportunities. You turned the ball over and gave it back to the Seahawks. It's, it's unacceptable if you're going to move forward and actually be a competitor in this conference because all these other teams, they're not playing games, bro. They got their offense rolling. It ain't, you ain't seeing these simple, stupid mistakes um, on a weekly basis. And, and honestly, bro, the Falcons have been getting bailed out. This, this loss has been a long time coming because with the last few weeks, the offense hasn't really been able to look as sharp as we want it to look. Against the Panthers, they weren't really sharp. Against the Buccaneers, they weren't really sharp. It was still a lot of stupid penalties that they still had happen in this game. It was a lot of small things that added up and ended up hurting them for the longevity of this game in terms of actually having a chance to win. So you get all of these offensive lineman penalties setting you back first and 15, first and 20, second and 15, second and 20. That's not going to help you accomplish a win at the end of the day. And then especially when you got the silly calls that's happening uh, in, in terms of uh, offensive pass interference and from the defensive pass interference, the stuff like that, it, it adds up. These little mistakes add up and it ultimately hurts you. So for the Falcons, hey, you got a lot of work to clean up. They got a lot of different things to, to make happen and, and change around before we can really consider them like a, a lethal threat in the NFC. I know they've been winning some games, but a lot of these games have been nail biters and we don't want nail biters. Fans don't want nail biters. Uh, if you're a fan of a specific team, I, I'll say that, you know, you're watching a game, you want a nail biter, but... Me being a Falcons fan, being a little biased right now in this moment, I don't want to watch a damn nail biter every week. I'm stressing myself out. I'm getting gray hairs. I'm losing my damn mind running around the house trying to keep up with all the games or, or this game with the Falcons in a nail biter. Like, come on, man. That's not. F I'm stressing the hell out over here. It's crazy. They got the Buccaneers next at Tampa Bay. And best believe, Tampa Bay is not about to play around. They're not going to play around. That offense is rolling. The defense for Tampa Bay is rolling as well. Um, now, Falcons, they won. They took care of business. Um, the first game when they played Tampa Bay, 36-30. But, I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy going into Tampa Bay and getting another win. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm hoping for the best, but they got to clean up some stuff. But I, on the bright side, I don't think it can get much worse. <laughs> I don't think it can get much worse from the Atlanta Falcons. Knock on wood. Uh, like comparing what they did this game to all the other weeks, I don't think it could get much, could get much worse. We've seen a lot of breakdowns happen. So, I mean, yeah, it'll be rough. But look, hey, we got some stuff coming up. A side note coming up, man. Some of these teams, there's a lot of teams right now I'm still making noise. And we got to chop down some of that noise because I don't know why some of y'all is talking. Um, I know playoffs is 
is a hope for a lot of teams. But yeah, we we gotta we gotta discuss. So we'll be right back. Um, it's not quite halftime, but we almost there. Stay tuned. We got a side note in just a sec.